Okay, let's talk about these uh, lockers just a little bit. These can be a major source of water getting into your camper and doing a lot of damage to your camper. So uh, the first thing that you want to take care of is making sure that you're caulked here on the outside. So around this little seam right here. So this is what separates the wall from the actual locker itself. So you can see here that I've got this kind of messy caulk job here, but it is sealed this way. If you don't seal this and you've got a little gap in here, and I see a lot of campers that have a gap in here, mine did too when I bought it. If you've got a gap in there, water's going to run down the side. It's gonna run down the inside here and it's going to get into your wall and it's going to do damage to your wall. And it will definitely collect down here below your locker door and it will do damage to your wall because you'll have a lot of water in there. So make sure that you've caulked this seam here so the water does not get on the inside of this channel. Now, <clears throat> I recommend using this stuff, ProFlex RV caulk. Uh, this stuff seems to be really tough. So of course, make sure that it's all cleaned really well and then uh, apply this stuff on there. And like I said, if it's a little bit of a messy job, like I've done here, at least it's better than leaking. The other thing that you want to do is replace your weather strip occasionally. So I'm gonna show you the weather strip in here. So this weather strip right here, this looks old, but it's still attached. On the other side, it wasn't even attached anymore. And this isn't going to allow a lot of water in, although maybe as you're driving down the road and you've got some air pressure, uh, that might push some water in if you're driving in the rain, but this stuff was totally detached on the other side. And so I just wanna show you how to replace that. Um, as it gets old, the adhesive gets dry and, and so on. So first thing you're gonna do, just pull it off. Usually it's cut somewhere. So you're just gonna pull this stuff off. Pull all the way across there. All the way down to the bottom and that luckily came off as one piece now if we look closely usually this leaves its adhesive layer behind so it didn't on this one little adhesive up here in the corner but usually it leaves its tape behind so if there's any tape up there you got to remove the old uh, adhesive tape it's a double-sided clear tape but I don't see any on here this is pretty good want to clean off the adhesive that's left over from the old tape uh, especially once you get that old tape off there's going to be some dried adhesive maybe some sticky adhesive and you don't want to apply new adhesive over the old adhesive so use something like goo gone or goof off uh, and just um, just remove all that soften that adhesive and then clean it all up all right so we're just going to go around here and clean this up Usually there's some adhesive left in the corners. It gets bunched up there in the corners just a little bit. All right, so once you get the track cleaned up here for the new weather strip, you can't just apply it to the Goo Gone or it won't stick. So you need to clean off the Goo Gone with something. So I'm gonna use brake cleaner, although I think you could use something like a rubbing alcohol to clean it off with. So I'm just using plain old brake parts cleaner. And this stuff seems to work pretty well to get rid of the goof off or goo gone. Totally cleaned up, then you're ready to apply your new weather strip. And just make sure that your weather strip is the same size. You can buy any different size of this stuff. Um, but I found this stuff on Amazon and it's almost a perfect match for what I had before. And uh, it comes in two like this that can be separated real, real easily. So I'm gonna cut a length that's just about the same as what I had before, maybe an inch or two longer. And uh, then I'm gonna apply it. All right, so I've got them together here, the old and the new, and I'm gonna cut it here. And like I said, uh, you know, maybe two inches longer, you may have a little bit of excess, but you don't want to tighten this stuff as you apply it. Like you don't wanna pull it taut. You want to just stick it on nicely. So 
if your old weather strip was a little bit too tight and was starting to pull off, make sure that you are cutting it just a little bit long so you can apply it smoothly. Okay, now I'm gonna start at the bottom and I'm going to work around to the left. You don't wanna have your seam at the top. You'd rather have your seam at the bottom. There's less of a chance that water's going to get in that way. So we're gonna start down here. You will need to remove the backing on the tape, of course. All right, so there, I've got the backing off. So now it's ready to be applied. So uh, here we go. I'm gonna start at the bottom in the center. Just kind of place it there. If you pull it too tight, when it gets warm and cold, uh, it'll get too tight and it'll pull itself loose. And the backing, <coughs> excuse me, the adhesive is pretty strong here, so just pull the backing off as you need to so it doesn't stick to everything as you're trying to get this to apply. getting close here. All right, and then just cut off your excess and try to line up that seam as well as you can. All right, and that's all there is to it. New weather strip all the way around and a nice sealed locker with caulk here. So this job is done. And I will throw a link to the uh, weather strip that I used in the description here for this video. Thanks for watching.